tell you something, son? When your spirit is floating down that tunnel toward the light, you know what's behind the light? It's not God, it's me. And I'm gonna kick your poncy soul all the way back down the tunnel till you choke on your own fucked up ribs. Now, wake the fuck up! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it is your host, the D-O-U-G, here once again for another main event. Now, of course, I know we've been gone a few weeks, but hey, big things have changed and big things are popping, but you'll find that out in the weeks to come. Now, of course, joining me is one of is, is one of my two co-hosts. She is the lovely but deadly Miss Kara. Miss Kara, how are you doing tonight? Oh, I am doing great. I am just... So glad to be back on the show for like what it's been three weeks, and I feel I don't feel like shit like I have been. So this is amazing. It's a lot of shit. Oh, and my speaker is turned up way too loud on my computer. Sorry about that. If you heard the beep. Also joining us tonight, he is the man from Canada. He is related to the Mountie and Deadly Durate. Apparently, it is Rob Goslin. You a dang fool. How's everyone doing out there tonight? Doing good, doing good. And, of course, we have a new caller in tonight. And I believe she's a woman, thank God. So, Kelly, you're not alone. And she, I believe, is a good friend of Rob Goslin. It is Penny? Yes, yes, it is I. And that is the first time I will ever remember a new caller's name. Write that down. <laughs> I'm going to post uh, it on Rob's wall. Uh, okay. Well, Penny, thank you for calling in and joining us here on the main event. Now, of course, if you are a new listener to the main event, we are kind of the show where, yeah, we don't know what the FCC is. So let's get this going. Kara, as we know, Monday Night Raw and SmackDown was in London this week. So what exactly happened on Raw since we know John Cena took on, I believe it was Luke Harper of the White family? Yeah, well... I presently have a lot of notes because I actually gave a shit about Raw, well, apparently. That's the first in weeks. <laughs> well, so Raw kicked off with a Bray Wyatt promo. Uh, pretty much everything that he's usually been doing. Singing, and I'm not singing the song because I sing terribly. Uh, basically talking about John Cena and how he's some kind of false hero and basically how, I don't know, he, um, I don't know, uh, people shouldn't look up to him and that he's pretty much going to take care of him at payback and that He will be the last man standing, and then Luke Harper will pretty much kick his ass. So long story short, Bray Bray Wyatt pretty much just said, follow me, don't follow John Cena at the end. Yes, pretty much. But in the end, uh, Bray Wyatt gets uh, attitude adjusted. That's just Mm -hmm. about it for that. Mm. Um. <laughs> uh, those those uh segments are always pretty interesting. I I love um listening to the. I think Kayla, I think Kayla, I think you're actually putting Rob to sleep. <laughs> I'm sorry. I am being absolutely boring. It's gonna be like twelve here, so. Stop being like Lance Storm. How many times have I told you? You're not Canadian. Leave the Lance Stormness to Rob. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> he knows I mean it in good love. <clears throat> if I could be serious for a minute. <laughs> Thank you. I was waiting for him to say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Well, the first match of the evening was uh, Antonio Cesaro taking on Sheamus, who apparently is the United States champion. <coughs> Ginger Cena. <coughs> anyway, um, when Cesaro comes out, there is a long Heyman promo, a very hysteric, a hysterical promo. <laughs> I think it started off with him like laying on the ground and saying that he was the queen bowing down to, what was it, King George or something. <laughs> um, Cesaro ends up winning by distraction by Paul Heyman. Mm-hmm. And in the end, Sheamus wants to give him a handshake out of respect and... Cesaro pretty much pulls a trick where he uh, just flicks back his hand, basically just like, fuck you, I don't want to shake your hand, and walks away. I wouldn't want to shake his hand either. Jesus, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Kara doesn't like Sheamus, and I don't either, but it was actually a pretty good match on Raw to start off the wrestling, and... I gotta give credit to Seamus on this one. He actually looks pretty good in Cesaro. Cesaro always looks good in the ring. And apparently doing the pre show is you know, we always have a pre show here. I was talking about payback and apparently yes. Because of that win on Monday, it will be a payback, Seamus defending his United States title against Cesaro. So let's go into what happened on Monday and SmackDown. Do we actually think Cesaro's gonna win the belt this quickly? One can always hope, but they just put it on Sheamus, and I'm just sadly going to say, no. They're not They're not going to take it off of him. Mm-hmm. Rob, Penny? <laughs> uh, do I think uh, they're going to take it off Sheamus already? Probably not. I don't see it. Mm. Um, I'm up in the air. Ooh, interesting. Is well, it oh, finish, finish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm up in the air because, you know, every time I think that, you know, somebody is going to be given, like, a, a good shot or a go- good run at, you know, holding that belt, mm-hmm. something seems to go wrong. Hmm. Right. Very interesting, and... Of course, we'll be discussing this more next week. Um, but let's not forget, though, in case everyone has forgotten, which I know we haven't, but if you have, Cesaro is an ex-United States champion, so this will not be his first one as U.S. champion. At right. least they'll see. Unfortunately, I can already call it now, looking at the other three matches for payback. It's pretty sad that the U.S. title, the IC title, is probably going to be the best match of the night. Moving on and continuing with Monday Night Raw, Kara? <laughs> okay, well... These next series of things I'm just going to put in a bombshell because they don't matter either way, except for when it comes to the pay-per-view. There is a series of beat-the-clock challenge matches. Whoever would win this, uh, this series would become number one contender for the... or for Wade uh, Barrett's belt. I'm sorry, bad news, Barrett. <laughs> um... The one that ended up getting it in the end was Robbie and Dan at <laughs> Robbie and Tam <laughs> uh, at a time of 4:15. Dolph Ziggler came close, but just barely missed the mark. Yeah, just in case, because Kale, like she said, RVD didn't win the beat the clock. Wisdom and Big E had the best time after he beat right back in what was probably the worst male match of the week. Um, then RVD beat, I believe he beat who, Alberto Del Rio? Yeah. Yeah, he beat Alberto Del Rio, and then Ziggler and Mark Henry went to a time limit draw. But, of course, we forget there was actually a fourth beat-the-clock match, but it never started because <coughs> right when Fandango and R2 were back to start, who would make her return after filming the Marine Four, So, the Miz, Summer Rae is back. Yeah, there's a little cold ball in there for you folks. <laughs> um, but yeah, OVD winning it, I think, I don't know why. I mean, I really don't think they're going to have him have Wade Barrett lose the IC title. I mean, that would be pretty 
fucked up. You just had him wearing extreme wars. It'd be like, like uh, Rob, you brought up. That'd be kind of weird. Sheamus wins the U.S. title and loses it at payback. So, RVD, if you think you're walking out of that pay-per-view with the belt, I'm afraid I got some bad news for you. Right? Yeah, so... Now, Kara, I know you paid attention to the Divas match this week, right? On Monday? I didn't see it, remember? Oh, you did not see Paige versus Alicia Fox on Monday night? No, I didn't. Oh, wow. That, well, before I discuss that one, I'll take that one. Um, who just joined us? Uh, apparently they left. Apparently they left the sound of my voice. <laughs> Well, then screw them. Uh, it was Paige versus Alicia Fox in London. Um, something and happened. Alicia was on fire through the entire match. It was insane. She yeah, was, was, like, all over Paige. Like, there was no tomorrow. Yeah, and what I'm about to say may shock everyone who knows me. That was at, that, that match, Paige versus Alicia Fox, was probably my favorite match of the week. Um, Alicia Fox would beat Paige on Raw, and... Than pay, and they were on Paige's home country, so to speak. So, Alicia Fox getting a very good win. Um, so, are we seeing a new feud with Alicia Fox and Paige? Are we going to finally see somebody else besides AJ Lee? You know, I would uh, definitely actually love it because, I mean, for a long time we've just been seeing... What was it? We've been seeing mostly... of the Bellas going at it with AJ, and then, you know, it's a bunch of repeats, and honestly, if anyone, there's a lot of people that deserve a chance, but Alicia Fox, she hasn't gotten a lot of attention, and when it comes to actually being a heel, she's actually pretty good at that, so, I mean, I I see this as a lot of potential for both parties. It could help Paige, and it can also help... uh, Alicia build back up her career if they even tried to pursue it anymore. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, Rob a penny. Sorry, I kind of zoned out for a second. What was the question again? I apologize. <laughs> uh, is it a good thing that we're finally seeing somebody else in the title picture excluding AJ since we all know AJ was the main focus of the Divas division for the last year and a half? Yes, I do, actually. I think gives, it, it's finally giving some of the other girls a shot, at, a, a shot on television. It's really building up a, a, lot, of the, a lot of the different divas now. And, it, and, wait, and then, of course, we've got NXT uh, things coming up, and I'll talk a little more about that as to what's going on there with their women's division as well. Ah, uh, yes, and I do got some news about that particular match when we get to NXT. Um... Now, Kayla, I believe since, I know Raw, since we did cover it already again, let's just talk about the main event because I know the main event was, how can I say this, weird? Well, I mean, we didn't, hold on, we didn't get Penny's opinion on the whole... Oh, well, uh, well, you see, see, this is what happens when I'm drinking, Penny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um... Well, I believe that it is going in a better direction for, you know, the diva category there. Um, Because I believe that everybody should get a shot, whether heel or face. Okay. I'm liking this too. Thank you, Rob. Oh, no, no, no. I I feel differently about some some divas, but... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right, so the main event was um it was an interesting main event. It was better than Friday Night Smackdown's main event, I'll tell you that right now. Shit. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute, she's giving <laughs> pops for John Cena main event. Everybody run. Well, this this main event was just shit. Uh <laughs> Tonight's main event was shit, so I'd rather not. <laughs> but, um, yeah. John Cena took on Luke Harper. 
Pretty much. Um, it ended ended in a disqualification. Um, Cena practically got his ass handed to him most of the match. <laughs> well, I don't want not most of it, just a large majority of it. He didn't lose, but he didn't win either. The White just White family just kind of took it to him. A couple of sister Abigails to him. And Bray Wyatt was singing just at the end, and since it was it's next week, right is uh, payback. Um, yeah. Yes. To lead up to the Last Man Standing match, as he was singing at this time, Luke was slowly counting up to ten, and they kind of just ended it there. I mean, the match itself, it was okay. And coming from a John Cena match, even the spice who's in there, that's still saying it's pretty damn good for me. <laughs> Everything else that happened in the match was amazing post-match, I mean. But what did everyone else think? Uh, yeah, I'm going to be honest. When that match came up, I was pretty much drunk. <laughs> Um, the only thing I remember was Luke Harper once again showing that he is the future of this business for big men. Um, he did another fantastic job. Um, as far as the Cena, Cena does what he does. Eh, I just gave I just gave up complaining and bitching about it. So I'll let somebody else do that. <laughs> go ahead, Penny. I'll let you take the next one before I jump in. Um, actually, go ahead and jump in because you know I slept since then. Oh, okay. Because um, I'll be honest, I kind of missed the, the very ending of Raw. I kind of missed the actual match or whatever. But, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think it's a good way to get to try and create interest into the match. Is Cena going to come back out of this? And da 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 I, mean, the I, I, think, I think that um, it's kind of like between Cena and the Wyatt, we were talking to a friend of mine about this. I think she's got a point in Silver Blade. Okay. Oh, okay, go ahead. Um, the only reason why I say that is because I, I know that, you know, the writers or what have you in the WWE, I don't know, you know, like, like Rob had said that, you know, it takes time. When, when things are changing, it takes time. Okay, but with I think some of the storylines they're grasping at straws. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. I, I think they're lost in what to do. Yeah, I think I the other problem though I think the other I mean I okay, everybody's always comes down on WWE creative and I mean no offense, so they should. Creative is not really giving us, you know, anything really substantial. Um, but that being said, I don't want to completely put it on creative. I mean, creative comes up with these plans and these storylines, and they're thinking long term. So their plans and their storylines, they're all what we're seeing now. They're planning like five, six, seven, eight months in advance already. They're Right now, they're planning for the end of the year pay-per-view, or they're, they're planning for Survivor Series because they, they should have already had SummerSlam already set up and everything. Now, all of a sudden, Daniel Bryan gets hurt, has to go through neck surgery, and they have got to change everything within minutes. It, it, it's very hard to keep storylines going when people, are, when people get hurt and what have you. I think that does play a little bit of a difference onto creative. I mean, I don't want to put everything on creative. But I agree that creative is not it, it is very substandard right now, and it's not giving us what we're looking for. Yeah, I'm going to actually agree. I mean, I think it's been, what, since, what, WrestleMania 30, that the next night the creative team had a little bit of bad luck, and not on there, and it's just been bad luck. I mean, Daniel Bryan has his wedding comes back, his dad dies, he has to leave again. Then he gets his match against Kane, which didn't have great build up, still a great match, but not not great build up. He gets hurt during the match. Now he's gone again. 
it just seems like a lot of bad luck happened. I'm not going to be mad. I, I just chalk it up to bad luck. I'm not mad at Cradle or anything like that. <coughs> now, granted, I'm going to say something here before we get to the main event. I believe, Taylor, you are done with Raw, right? I am pretty much done with Raw, yes. All right. Here's the thing, and a lot of people think that how this does, how, oh, the Raw show this week is going to get bad in ratings because it wasn't a great show. The Raw show this week was not bad. The problem, it was in London, which normally I have no problem with. But let's be honest, everyone here in America was a little behind, so while they were doing London, when it aired at us, London was already over. I don't know how many people I saw already posting results when it was like 3 o'clock in the afternoon here in the United States because Raw was already almost over. Right. So, so, you know, I can't exactly say Raw was bad because of the matches. It was kind of bad because if you log on to Facebook or that evil thing called Twitter or any other thing you use to talk to people online, you kind of find out who won the matches already. That's why I tried to stay off over this week because, yeah, I wonder if people like to spoil everything apparently because they say we do it all the time. I'm like, yeah, we may, but at least the show... It's already over for us, so you're not doing it during the fucking show. Right? Now that I got that off my chest, because I wanted to get it off since this week, it's time to hop over to the main event on the WWE Network. And oh dear God, what a pathetic main event this week was. I mean, who else watched the main event besides me this week? No, I don't have the network yet. I'm not allowed it in Canada until the end of the year. And guess you can't afford it and will probably never, ever get it. Me! Fuck you, WWE. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it wasn't like it was doing any better on the I.O. channel. Um, Teddy, yeah, this... you have the network? Did you see main event at all? Um, No, actually, I don't have uh, the WWE network at this time, but I'm hoping to, like, um, next month. <laughs> mm. Well... Just to give a quick thing of the main event, because this main event was terrible. When I mean terrible, the only thing that was better than was this week's TNA. We'll let that sit in there for a minute. Uh, oh, only wow. really, only really two matches. So I'm going to with the thing that was a segment and not a match. Antonio Cesaro versus Mark Henry in a in a arm wrestling match. Really, really, that was pathetic, stupid. And no. First of the Wait, can you match, repeat that? Can you repeat who was? I heard Mark Henry, but not the other one. It was Cesaro. Uh, yeah, the, it was a. I, I understood what WWE was doing because they wanted to build up Cesaro, but you had him cheap shot Mark Henry in the mouth and you had him flip the table over on Mark Henry. Yeah, that was stupid. As far as for the two uh, matches. They're trying to keep him strong. How strong would he look if Mark Henry just beat him? And we know that Mark Henry would beat him in an arm wrestling contest. Well, here's the problem, though. They didn't even start the arm wrestling match. That's why I said it was stupid. You could at least start it, you know, make... But I've well. never agreed with arm wrestling contests in WWE because they, they never turn out right. They don't... They, it doesn't look right. It's always awkward. It just... It doesn't doesn't fit in with programming, and I've thought that for years. <coughs> I agree. As far as for the two matches that actually happened, um, the first match was Sherlock Shandow, a.k.a. Damien Shandow, dressed up as Sherlock Holmes. I don't know why. Uh, versus R-Truth, Damien Shandow would finally get a win. Yay, he beat R-Truth. Nobody cared. Still a good match. And not a fuck was given. I actually like Sandow, actually. Just saying. Just, oh, no, no, no. Don't get me wrong. I, I love Sandow. Every time he screams out silence, I scream out, I kill you! Um, yeah, Sandow. It was a Sandow one. I mean, that was the only good thing about the match. I mean, all truth is all truth. You either like him or you hate him. As far as for the other match, it was Naomi versus Asana. Naomi won again. Not a great match, but not a bad one. I mean, it was what it was. Right. So this week's event was a dud. So, Rob, save us to talk about NXT. Oh, okay. Um, NXT. Well, <laughs> last night on NXT, 
we had a few matches. Uh, to start off, we had uh, Bo Dallas taking on Biggie Langston. If Bo Dallas was to lose, he would be leaving NXT. Period. Well, Bo Dallas lost. Big E won that. Bo Dallas left NXT. I guess he's now on SmackDown. Um, next up, we had a, win, a women's match. Tamina versus the WWE Divas Champion Paige. Great match. Uh, in which Paige won. Then we had Camacho taking on Adam Rose in which Adam Rose won. Again, it was a good match. It, I mean, it was what it was. I, I love watching Adam Rose work in the ring. I, 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 again, I've said this. I love his song. It's catchy. It gets fan involvement. I get it. His voice, as long as he's not on the mic, I'm happy because his voice has got to go. His voice is really bad. Like, I just, I, I can't deal with his voice for some stupid reason. Anyway, moving on. Uh, we, in, at the end of this week, we have NXT TakeOver. And yet it's a two-hour program exclusively to the WWE Network. Well, there's going to be a, the ending of the women's tournament to determine the new NXT Women's Champion. Well, to determine that, they had a tournament. And they had the, the, and in the semifinals of the tournament tonight, we had Natty and Natalia, sorry, taking on Sasha Banks. Now, um, so Natty would end up winning that, and through the division, uh, through the tournament and stuff, she will be taking on Charlotte Flair, Ric Flair's mm -hmm. daughter, Charlotte, um, in the final of the tournament at uh, Takedown to determine the new NXT uh, Women's Championship. So let me get and, this straight. And sorry for interrupting. No problem. It's going to be a multi-generation superstar in the area versus a multi-generation superstar in Charlotte. I just, yeah. Does anyone realize how, fun, how funny this is? This would be the second multi-generation superstar to have that deep NXT Divas title as Paige is a multi-generation superstar as well. So keep that right. up, WWE. Right. That's a good thing. That's good for business. I, I fully agree. I think either one of these two having the women's championship will only elevate the women's division. <laughs> And I mean, we're talking about those. I mean, you were saying before about the women's division, about giving new people chances. Well, I mean, this is a whole tournament set up around it. I mean, the women, the, 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 what we're getting on NXT is so much better than anything on Raw or SmackDown as of late. Anyway, to end off NXT, uh, Kurt Hawkins, funny, funny would take on the NXT champion, Adrian Neville. I don't think it was It's Too Hard to Figure Out who won this one. So Adrian okay. Neville wins. So Adrian Neville wins quick, and Tyson Kidd comes out. Now, again, at TakeOver this Sunday, um, Tyson Kidd is taking on Adrian Neville for the belt, for the NXT championship. Tyson Kidd would make a promo saying, look, you know, I was, w, I was, you know, I, I got here young, I, I worked my ass off, I, I busted everything I had to do, I was on SmackDown, I was former WWE Tag Team Champ, I have all these credits, and the only way I'm going to get back to that spot is by becoming the new NXT Champion. Hmm. And Adrian Neville kind of said, well, that's all fine and dandy, but if you honestly think you're just going to use the NXT as a stepping stone to get back to the main roster at my expense, you got another thing coming, buddy. Ooh. <laughs> you know, you, you, you're barking up the wrong tree. This is my belt and my championship. Now, he didn't say it in these exact words, but work with me. Hmm. You know... And you're not just going to take it off me that easy. So it really becomes down to, well, this Sunday at TakeOver, we'll see what happens. May the best man win. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's this Sunday? I thought it was next Thursday. 
Oh, is it next? Oh, it could be next Thursday. You could be very well right at that. But I do know that it's a two-hour showing of NXT because they're having, like, I guess their first pay-per-view I style. Know. Yeah, I know, and this is me doing the inside thing that I know because I love the text messages from WWE. I know Bret Hart and Ric Flair are supposed to be there, so... <laughs> We may be seeing them in the Divas match, uh, NXT Divas match. And I know Christian's supposed to be there, and I know Cesaro and Paul Heyman's on the pre-show. So right. gonna, I'm sure the Divas match is going to be on the card. Um, so oh, Well, oh, it, it will be because they've been building this tournament for about three weeks now. Yeah, and I know they got the tag team titles on the line as well at the, at the um, NXT thing as well. Now, of course, I know I'll be watching it. Rob, I know you'll be watching it. So everyone, please... Watch it because next week we're going to be discussing that NXT show next week as well with Payback. So it, um, it, it, I'll be watching it as long as it's shown up here. If, if it's exclusively the WWE Network only, I may not be able to see it, but I'm definitely going to try. And that's <laughs> something I definitely want to see. Yeah, and that's why I'm watching it just in case if it's not showing up in Canada. Now. We have to say bye to NXT and the WWE Networks. Everyone wave bye to it. As we hop on back on the boat to London. So, well, um, actually, I won't wave goodbye to the network. I'll moon it and say, kiss my ass. Yeah, she, no she, comment. She, because she can't get the network, so she's kind of... <laughs> I, would, no, I would love to be able to watch NXT. That would be amazing. I just can't. No, I... That is, Again, no comment. Yeah, she she has to spend the ten bucks to get the lightsabers. Ooh, yes, I'm in, I know, Doug. So I'm not even. That. No. <laughs> <laughs> put that, we should just put that on a T-shirt for WCC. Doug, shut the fuck up. It'd be printing money. Yeah. <laughs> all right, now Kayla, I know tonight was SmackDown. Can we just talk about the one thing I know we all want to talk about from tonight's SmackDown? Bo fucking Dallas. <laughs> I actually did not get to see. I've seen people talk about him already. So, um, give give us your opinion on Mr. Bo Dallas. <laughs> well, me and Rob, we've seen him in NXT. So, we'll, I think you and me, Rob, we're kind of good enough to know him, correct? He's a cocky guy. He's he's the next he's the next uh, person to be really cocky. Like we had the Miz as a co- as our cocky heel. Then we had Dolph Ziggler as our cocky heel. So now we have Bo Dallas as the cocky heel. Yes. Now my thing is, and I've said it before. You need to believe in this. Yes. <laughs> now. I love Bo Dallas in the ring. I've made that abundantly clear on WCC and almost any time I can get a chance. He's a great wrestler. I just, oh, don't, like this, I just don't like this gimmick of Bo, you know, believe. I, I, I don't buy into it, which, granted, it may take time to get used to like it does with everything else. But people forget, and I said this, while I like Bo Dallas, I don't think he'll ever be as popular as his brother is, and we all know who his brother is. I think I know who his brother is. Who's his brother? Ray Wyatt. Okay, yeah. Yeah, this, this, people forget that. You, oh, Ray Wyatt was the, was the other Dallas, you know, on when NXT was on the Sci-Fi Network when it took ECW's position. While I like Bo Dallas, I think he's missing that one thing, and that's the, you know, how to, you know, what, what's what I'm looking for, Rob? Uh, I want it's like the it factor. I mean, he's missing that one thing that will make you believe he could be a main event player. Is he? He'll be a great mid card on our, and he has a you know. But I don't think he's going to ever be as popular as good as his brother just because he doesn't have the mic skills. Ray has the mic skills. Bo has the technical ability. Oh, Bo definitely has technical ability, but you're right. He doesn't have the charisma that that uh, Bray does. I mean, everything that Bray that's right now is turning into gold. Mm-hmm. Now, so, I'm going to say his match was good for developing his character and showing people off who don't get to watch NXT, but I'm sure his character's probably going to get boring real quick for some of us. Now, Kara, 
because this was your opportunity to see Bo Dallas for the first time exploding that Royal Rumble appearance. How did you feel about Bo Dallas tonight? To, to be frank, I know of Bo Dallas. I've seen some of his work, so I'm not completely blind to who Bo oh. Dallas is. I'm in the <laughs> So, I mean, I from the work that I've seen of Bo Dallas inside the ring, he is actually pretty good. But the fact is, I don't think he's definitely as good as his brother inside the ring or when it comes to the mic. Um, I mean, I, I can definitely, definitely admire the fact that we, hey, we finally have a, a cocky dick heel now, pretty much. Um, that's something that they've been needing for quite a while now, because we mm-hmm. haven't had a bunch of those, and I think if they play their cards right, they can definitely make this a really, really good thing going on. So, so I mean, I guess it's what it comes down to is, um what's going to be good for business, and this is definitely one of those things that you pray works because it's going to help. Mm-hmm. Now, now, since Bo Dallas is coming out, and I want to stay on this, we've seen Adam Rose, and we've seen Bo Dallas. So, out of those two, since they were the two recent ones that come up from NXT, I'm not counting Cesaro or anybody else right now, because we know how we all feel about the Wyatt family. We love them. Which one has a better shot at actually succeeding right now? Adam Rose or Bo Dallas? Which one has a better chance of succeeding? Yeah, which one has a better chance not getting sent back to be repackaged is pretty much what I'm asking. Personal opinion? Adam Rose. Adam Rose, ooh. And the reason I say that is because it's just it's because of the way the fans connect to him. He's got the fans all over him. It's insane. Mm. It's one of those things where something happens and you just can't explain it, so you just roll with it. <coughs> Excuse me. But for some reason, the fans are loving this Adam Rose. Well, I can't say for some reason because I'm a big fan of Adam Rose too. Like I said, I love his in-ring work. I love his music. I, I, it's catchy. It gets fans And I love the fan involvement and everything. I just don't like his voice. If he would just use a regular voice, everything would be fine for me. Hmm. But I mean, and, I, I think the fans have connected to him more than Bo Dallas, in which, which is A, why he came up to main roster faster than Bo Dallas, and B, why I think he'll, he, he, his character will end up sticking around longer than Bo Dallas's. Ooh, interesting, interesting. So they got one for Adam Rose to who will stay. Well, won't get repackaged. Uh, so, Carol, Penny, do you agree um, with this? I, I, this is completely off target, but speaking of irritating voices, I don't like Brock Lesnar's. We all don't like Brock Lesnar's. We can all preach to that one. Oh, I like Brock Lesnar. He sounds like a little girl when he screams. I, you know, and and, and I'm not bullying him because of that and all. It's just, it just, his voice goes right through me, yo. Yeah, it seems like Sable kept his private in, in, his, in her purse as of late. Yes, I went there. Um, yes, we. we I uh, love Lesnar. But back to Adam Rose and Mr. Bo. Uh, we already know Rob's answer. He thinks Adam Rose has a better shot. So it's up to Penny and Kara. Well, um, I actually have to agree with Rob. Because, because of the large fan interaction, personally, I'd rather Bo be the one that survived. But looking at what it seems right now, he seems to be the one that's going to last longer just because of the large fan interaction and how he's literally just pulling the pants, 
Pan. Pan Pan was his gimmick. I mean, it's attracting everybody, and when you've attracted so many people, it's kind of hard to just make them disappear like that. Mm. Right. So. So Taylor's Denny. Rob. Denny. <laughs> um, I I agree with Rob also. Adam Rose. Damn. Um. Okay, Rob, you're usually the one who keeps track of everything when screwed shit happens. Mark, mark this down, because we all agree. Because um, I think Adam Morris has a better shot, like you said, his connection with the fans. My only worry is, who was another wrestler who had great connection with the fans, and then when he got hurt, the fans stopped giving a shit? I'm sure everyone's like, who? Fandango. And oh, yeah. Last, when he was popular, everybody did the da da did the same dangling. He gets injured. Yep. What happened? Okay. Well, I mean, Triple H even made a comment on about that. On I think it was a Raw. I'm not sure. But, I mean, but he came out and he was like, everyone all wanted Fandango and everything. We'd give it to them, and then no one gave a shit. Which is a shame because he's a great talent. Yes. You know, um, and then, uh, and, and I mean, look at Dolph Ziggler. Everyone wanted, everybody wanted Dolph Ziggler to have that championship. Everybody was screaming, give Dolph Ziggler the championship, give Dolph Ziggler the championship. They gave it to him. He got a concussion. He came back, and not a fuck was given. Yeah, uh, didn't I say that on the pre-show earlier, that I said that Ziggler, Fandango, and I can't believe I'm saying this. Like I said it in, I'll say it now. Zach Wright, I mean, wasn't there a yeah. big push by fans to give him the U.S. title shot, and then when he finally wins it, no one cared? <laughs> I mean, and I, and I know it seems like we're ba- I'm bashing the fans here, and I kind of am of it because some of the fans of today, and I'm not saying all of them, some are kind of fickle. You know, the Baskin Robbins flavor of the month, so I'm hoping that doesn't happen to Adam Rose. I'm hoping. But I agree, no, and I agree with you. I mean, I think the fans just want to rally behind the person they want to have the championship, but they don't actually want him to have the championship because every time he, the person they want gets the championship, they just get behind the next guy in line. Yeah. It's like we want to cheer for the guy going for the championship, not the champion himself. Mm-hmm. Right, now that we have the Adam Pogge and Bo stuff out the way, Kara, anything else you want to take note of of SmackDown tonight? <coughs> well, let me see if I don't got things that are known as shit in my notes. <laughs> you don't want well, to <laughs> I ain't got nothing except for uh, Hulk Hogan dashing, so... Yeah, um... Just a quick recap, since SmackDown really wasn't that great. Hulk Hogan came out, first time in 20 years that he was in London. He got a big pop, which doesn't surprise me. People love Hogan still. It doesn't matter how old you're all. Yeah, well, um, how long has it been since, you know, uh, Jimmy Hart has been in London? How about the same yeah, amount right. of time? Exactly. <laughs> so Hulk Hogan gets the praise, but Jimmy... He doesn't get shit. So you know what? Fuck you, Hulk Hogan. They were only there to promote Legends House anyway. It wasn't like they were doing all that much. Um, let's see what I was. Uh, Seamus, I believe, defeated a boat to the wheel by disqualification. Uh, the Usos won by disqualification. Batista, which was the only decent match of the night, defeated Dolph Ziggler in an OD2 match. And Summer Rae acted as a referee and screwed over Eve and one of the Bella Twins as she gave a fast count for the Funk Adathos. So it looks like it's going to be Summer Rae versus everybody. For the record, she looks really freaking hot when she's not in her, like, dancer attire. Okay. Ava, Ava the reason they did this, by the way, just so everyone's aware, because I don't know how many people watch Total Divas, there's been a major, major issue on Total Divas as of late between Summer Rae and Ava Marie. Now, what happened 
just so we're, everyone's all caught up real quick, WWE was going to make Ava Marie and Summer Rae a tag team. <coughs> so they made them this tag team. They were going to call them the Red and Gold and the whole nine and da-da-da-da-da. Well, Summer brought Ava into, I guess, the training area to, te- to help her with her in-ring ability because, again, Ava has only been with the WWE nine months. So she's green as shit. (laughs) You know, she's like as green as grass sort of thing. So she, but the problem is, is Ava, every time she gets in the ring, she'll learn something, but she's not retaining the information to be able to hold a match very well. We all know this. Anyone who's watching Total Divas knows that Ava Marie just, you know, for some reason, isn't quite giving it her all in for her in-ring ability and learning. We know this. I've been complaining about it forever. Now, moving on past that. So they were going to tag tag them up. And their very first night that they were going to have a match was on, like, a main event. And Summer went to WWE um, heads and basically said, look, this isn't going to work between Ava and I because she's not really ready. I need, we need someone else with us, and da 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 So they put them in a three-man tag. It was Tamina, Ava, and Summer taking on Natalia, and I believe either the Bellas or the Funkadactyls, irrelevant who, who, the, who the people in the match were for, the, for that point. But... I think it was Nikki. Okay, well, anyway, um, so they're in the ring, and they're doing their thing, but Tamina and Summer are the only ones getting involved in the match. Every single time Ava, Ava Marie went to tag herself in, Summer would cut her off and tag herself in. So it was only Tamina and Summer for the whole match while Ava just stood on the ring apron looking like an idiot. At the end of the match, all the divas, and I'm not kidding, like the Bellas, the Funkadactyls, even Tamina Snuka went up to Ava and said, what the fuck was that? What the hell happened there? Why didn't you come into the match? And she explained that every single time she tried, Summer would jump the gun and not let her in the ring and everything. When someone else approached Summer, and I believe it was Bree that did it, approached Summer about it, saying, hey, what was that about or whatever? Summer turns around and goes, well, I, don't, I don't, really don't think he belongs in the ring because she sucks. Flat out, she sucks in the ring. I didn't want her to make a fool of me. And information went back to Ava, so they've been feuding on Total Divas for the last little bit. I also understand Total Divas is, is taped a few months prior and that while they're showing Total Divas, they're actually filming season three. But, I mean, so they were having issues from before. Well, they used that, <laughs> they'll use that in current programming to boost the ratings of Total Divas. So Summer comes down as the guest referee, screws over Ava Marie. I think they're trying to set up for an Ava versus Summer match. Hmm is what I think is happening. Just to give the background as to why Ava, or why Summer kind of screwed Ava out of the match. Yes. With, with, with the fast count, just to let you know. All right, fair enough. Um, now it's time, because I think we've covered everything from SmackDown, so everyone say bye to WWE. Say bye. Bye, Apple. Because we're heading to a place that I love the most, the one thing I promote regularly on WCC. And what would that be? ROH. Water. Time to talk and about I am totally lost with that one. ROH, Wait. Ring of Honor? Yes. Okay. Um, that's fair. Yeah, don't worry. Everyone gets lost, Penny, when I talk about Ring of Honor. It's okay. Uh, Right, well, wow, there's blonde in my hair. I'm, t- I'm totally lost all the time. Don't feel bad. Oh, okay, fair enough. All right, we all move right. on now. Of course, 
what I wanted to do the last two weeks was promote their pay-per-views, which I unfortunately did not. But don't worry, I have the recaps. So let's go. First, we're going to go to Global Wars, which was in Rob's area in Canada. Yeah, so I know, Rob, you, you did not get to see it, but here's what happened. Michael Burnett was Maria Canonis. Did I pronounce her name right? Canonis? I can't, I can't pronounce her name right. Excuse me. Uh, the, Michael Burnett defeated ACH in what was a pretty decent match. Good opener is what it is, you know. You're not going to hit the ballpark every time. Uh, RH is unbreakable. Michael Elgin defeated New Japan's Tawaka Watabia. Okay, before anybody cleans me on this, I cannot speak Japanese. If you're expecting me to speak Japanese, I already know I'm going to have the Japanese people saying I'm offending them. I don't care. In a triple threat match, the Briscoes defeated Red Dragon and the decades BJ Whitmer and Jimmy Jacobs. Now, I want to talk about this match. This match was actually good, and I don't normally give praise to the Briscoes because I'm not a fan of theirs. I'm a fan of Red Dragon. I, mean, I have to jump out, actually. I'll have to talk to you all later. My phone's going to die. Understandable. So, Rob, you have a great weekend, all right, man? You too. We'll talk next yeah, week. Buddy. All right. We'll talk to Rob next week. Hopefully he has a good weekend in Canada. Um, yeah, the Bris- this was actually a good match. Briscoe's got a good win. It's so good for them. Um, we also had Cedric Alexander defeating Roderick Strong. Decent match. The Young Bucks retaining the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championship uh, with a victory over the, the Forever Hooligans, Alex Kuzloff and Rocky Ramona, and the Time Splitters with Kasundi and somebody from TNA, Alex Shelley. So TNA lost a lot of superstars this few months, haven't they, guys? Oh, my God. TNA is just, you know, they're a sinking ship. Um, I haven't watched it, and I don't even have to watch it to know that they're fucking... And they're going to be losing a lot more superstars if they're not even careful. Well, Kayla, I got a big surprise for you and Penny later because I'm going to get to the big surprise because Rob already knows what it is. Uh, Audie Evans defeated uh, Audi Cruz to continue his undefeated streak. Uh, Hishiro Chisani, again, I'm sorry for mispronouncing his name, and Justin Thunderwaga defeated Tsukuski Namana and Jado. I really, 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 really need to take a class in Japanese language. Uh, Jay Lethal, with Truth Martini, retained the television title by defeating Cyrus Young, Matt Taven, and Tomasa Champa. And just in case if anyone has, does not know, Jay Lethal is now heel, and Matt Taven is now face. They flipped roles. Um, of course, the other two matches from that pay-per-view, AJ Styles, who is the new IWGP Heavyweight Champion, <coughs> and his tag team partner, Kyle Anderson, who were representing the Bullet Club, defeated Akashuma Okudiki and Guido. And in the main event, Adam Cole successfully defended his Ring of Honor World title by beating Kevin Steen. Now, Kevin Steen may be coming to the WWE. We'll have more information on this in a few weeks. As for the other pay-per-view they had, which was last week, World Awards, Caprice Coleman defeated Adam Page after the match. Jimmy Jacobs pretty much beat the fuck out of Adam Page and kicked him in the ball. It was punishment for losing. Ain't that a, ain't that a great teammate? You lose and he beats the fuck out of you. That's what Kayla <laughs> yeah. wants to do to me every night after I piss her off. Wink, wink. <laughs> View discretion is advised. Uh, the Bullet Club then came out. Um, well, this was funny. When they came out and AJ Styles came out, the whole crowd chanted, Fuck TNA. That had to be the greatest moment in wrestling history. <laughs> Amen! I love you, fans! I, this is why I love Wing of Honor fans, because we, <laughs> we pretty much say whatever the fuck we want, and it was hilarious. And this was a harsh reality, because they know what they're talking about. Um, they came out, AJ was coming out to talk trash, and then it was announced that AJ would defend his title against Michael Elgin, and... Um, the ex IWGP heavyweight champion, Kisana Oduki. Um, after that, it was Matt Taven, Tomasa Champa, and ACH defeating the team of for the Forever Hooligans and Tawanka Wannabe when Taven pinned Wannabe. After that, the decade defeated Greedo and Jado after Strong hit a slick kick on Greedo. After the match, Alexander came running into the ring for Strong, Jay Brooks, and Ritma, who's Various in attack, who they bleh, excuse me, who they attack, and now Alexander is injured. Now, 
after that, Jay Lethal defeated Kasuti to retain the TV title. Now, doing the match, uh, Jay, uh, ugh, I cannot talk right right now. Tooth Martini was ejected from ringside. After that, Machine Gun Kyle Anderson and Doc Gallows, who we were better known as Festus. We haven't heard that name in a while. Who in America have we, Taylor and Penny? Oh, my God. No. That's it. Yeah. How long have he been gone? Holy crap. Uh, he's pretty much been out of the U.S. since he left the um, Aces and Eights last year. So he's pretty much been in Japan for about a year or two. Um, they would defeat the uh, Jay and Mark Briscoe. Um, after that, Kevin Steen lost his match to Sukuna Nubuiki, Um And then Cyrus Song came out and said, Kevin Steen is a little boy, not a man. Uh, then Harisha Tusana defeated Michael Bennett in what was probably the third best match of the night. Um, but of course, we're getting to my favorite part. My number one match from that pay-per-view last week. Now, Kara, who is my favorite tag team in the wrestling business right now? Or is this Penny now? Um, Pen- Penny's not going to know because this is the <laughs> first time Penny has called into this. Mm. Is this- well, oh, your favorite tag team? And I said they, and I said I have the theme song on my jump drive, and I have a T-shirt of theirs. I'm the president of the fan club. The American Wolves? No. Sorry, they, I'm not thinking very straight. They are now the three-time Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions as Red Dragon, Bobby Fish, and Kyle O'Reilly defeated the Young Bucks to win the titles. As when ah. that was kept out. Now, Red Dragon wore second by UFC star Filthy Tom Rona and what was to be the match of the year candidate. And by the way, this match was also covered by TMZ as they promoted this match after the match was over. So Ring of Honor is getting their publicity. And then in the main of two main events, Adam Cole defeated Justin Thunder Liger to retain the title. And Phenomenal AJ Styles defeated Michael Elgin and... Odoki to retain his title. Now, after that match, Adam Cole came out and said, I'm the real world champion. You're just a champion in Japan, which means nothing. So look for Adam Cole versus AJ Styles to come very soon. And there was one more piece of information after that. And this is why I mentioned earlier that I have a surprise. As we know, TNA has already lost AJ Styles. Well, they lost another superstar to Ring of Honor. He is coming home. He is an ex-division champion. He is a tag team champion in TNA. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready for the fallen angel. This Christopher Daniels makes his return in the honor at best, at best in the world. And he's not coming alone. Because guess who else has, was recently let go by TNA? You know, TNA has taped the show, so he's still technically on the roster. So making the debut in Ring of Honor will be bad influence. Now I heard of that name. So Kaz, <laughs> yes, so Kaz will be making his debut in Ring of Honor for the first time. Chris Daniels will be making his return. So This so makes my oh, fan growingness happy. Yes, Christopher Daniels is the um he, and the best thing he did, he, they showed it at the end of the last pay review where they were getting ready to hype up Best in the World. And then another video comes right after it. You see Christopher Daniels clips, and then you just see him drinking a thing. He says, I'm coming home. And then he says, hey, come here. So there's a guy with his face blacked out and a T-shirt blacked down, and he says, what? Did you think I was coming alone? Get ready. This is the greatest tag team's coming home. It looks like that influence is coming to the Ring of Honor, which is great. Well, this is exactly what I'm going to say to TNA right now. You uh, best be packing your bags and going back to hell because you're losing all your people. And you lost that influence, which means you lost me completely. Goodbye. (laughs) Yeah, well... Unfortunately, now that we know, that we've gone into all that, I got some bad news. We have to go because you know it's getting late, and Chris has got to get this post and record and everything. So, 
before we go, just as a quick announcement, next week's main event will be a t- will be a special main event as we will be covering the NXT show, and we're going to be discussing payback. We're going to be making all predictions, talking about the matches. By ourselves, we'll be making its return, and we're going to be doing fantasy booking. And this fantasy booking will be if you could face one wrestler who you would love to give ultimate payback to. Who would it be and why? And that's all next week. So, Kara, thank you for calling in again tonight. And, Penny, thank you for joining us on the main event. We'll uh, talk to you later. Talk to you later. So, until next week, everyone, have a safe weekend. And we'll see you next time, folks. Woo! Everybody hang up now. <laughs>